Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create section titles for your site using the section title widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and its possible stylization options. Some of these include different fonts, styles, color variations and more. You can also combine this widget with other elements such as images, buttons, etc. Essentially, you can combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to your heart's content. So, let's take a look at how you can use this widget and customize it. Head over to the back end. And in the Elementor sidebar, search for section title. There it is. Now, let's drag it over to the right. And this is how the section title looks by default. It has some placeholder content that we'll be replacing shortly. This placeholder content is composed of a subtitle, title, and some text. I'll start by replacing the title, so just type over the existing text here. Ok, there it is. Then the subtitle. One moment while I type it in. Ok. Now the next option lets us pick the subtitle position. By default it's above the title, but you can change that to be below the title. Then you get this look. But since that's not the design I'm going for, I'll switch back to above title. Then we have the text field where we can replace the remaining text. Give me a moment while I type it in. I'm using the content from one of the examples on the widgets page because I don't want to have any pseudo Latin on my page, even though this is just a demo for the tutorial. Alright, my text is here. And when we look above, we can see that there are all kinds of settings here that would allow me to change the look of my text if I wanted to. I can pick its HTML tag, it can stay as a paragraph or I can switch it to anything from H1 to H6. Then we have options to make it bold, italic, underlined, format it as a list, link it. Ok, the full screen is for the editor window, it won't change anything on the page front end. And there's the text mode for anyone who wants to add code to the text or use CSS to style it. Ok, moving on. Underneath this we have the positions of line break option. It applies to the title and lets us pick where it will break off into the next line. Let me demonstrate. If I set 3, the line will break after the third word. If you want to have multiple breaks, just separate the numbers with a comma. And that's it. Then, if we want to disable the title line break for display on smaller screens, we can do so here. If we set it to yes, then the title line will remain unbroken on all screens that have 1024 pixels or less for their size. Ok, following this we have the positions of decorated words. If you want certain words to pop from your title, you can set their number here and let me show you. I'll set 1, 2, 3. And now we can see that these words have changed their look. The default decoration is italic, but you can change that. To do that, you need to pop over to the style tab and find the title different decoration option. And when you open the drop down menu, you can see the other possible decorations for the title. So italic is set by default, but there's also underline and bold. And you can pick whichever one of these you like. Now let's get back to the content tab and the settings there. I'll remove the values I set here, I just added them to show you what the option does. Ok. Along the same lines we have the positions of different colored words option. If I set 1, 2, 3 again, my first 3 words will get a different color. Which color that turns out to be is set within the style tab. Using the title different color option. And you can set whichever color you like using this color picker. Ok, let's get back to the content tab. And I'll remove this. After that we have the enable button option. As its name suggests, if I set it to yes, it will let me have a button with my section title element. And if you opt to use a button, the next set of settings contain options for adjusting it. There's the layout, where we can pick if the button will be filled, which is our default, or if it will be outlined, or if it will be textual. I'll set mine back to filled. Then we have the button types. These include standard, which is our default, with inner border, and icon boxed, which looks a lot like the standard type until you pick an icon for it. 
I'll put this back. Then we can enable a button text underline. If you switch it to yes, it looks like this. I'll set it to default, which is no underline. Next, we can pick the button size. Other than normal, there's small, large, and normal full width. OK. The button text can be changed here. I'll replace mine so it says view more. And right underneath is where you'd add the button link. I'll just use a hashtag as a placeholder. Then you can pick whether the button will open in the same window or a new one. The next set of options is for the button icon. So even with the standard button type, you can add an icon. I'm going to add, just a sec, an angled arrow. I'll use this one. Insert. And there it is. When you pick an icon, you can also choose its position. It's set to right by default, but you can move it to the left. I'll stick with the right. After this, we have the developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. And we can switch its setting to yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode so we get this text. And we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Alright, that's it. Let's move on to the style tab and see what we have in there. The first option is for alignment. It's to the left by default, but you can make it center. Or right. OK. Then we can pick the title tag. You can pick anything from H1 to H6 or set the P tag. We can also change the color of our title, like so. Then we have the title typography options. With these, we can pick things like the font family for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. You can also pick the font size here. I'll set 70 pixels for mine. Then we have the weight option, which we can use to make our title bold, or we can pick a number value to adjust the weight. I'll set mine back to default. Then we have the text transform option, which we can use to make the title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the same as our default. And using style, we can make our text normal, which is the same as default. Or turn it italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, which is our default. Then the line height, which you can use to get a bit more space for your title. Finally, letter spacing lets us create more space between the letters. OK, that's it for the typography options. Now, the next two options are ones we've already seen. They allowed us to set a different color or different decoration for specific words in our title. So, moving on, we have an option to set the subtitle tag. I'm going to switch mine to H6 and make the subtitle a bit smaller. Then we have the subtitle color that works the same as any other color picker. And we have the subtitle typography. This has all the same options as the title typography, which we've covered already. These just apply to the subtitle instead of the title. After this, we have the text color option. So this one's for changing the color of your text. And we also have typography options for the text. And that's it. Next, we have the settings for spacing style. In here, we have things like the title margin. So if you increase the values while keeping the fields linked, you can create more space all around the title. But if we click here, it will delink the fields and reset the values. Then we can set separate values for each side of the title margin. For example, I'll set 15 pixels for the top margin to create a bit more space between the title and the subtitle. We also have a subtitle margin top option. If you increase the value, you'll get more space above the subtitle. Then we have something similar for the text with the text top margin. So this option would let us add more space here. We can see how it looks when I move the slider. I'll leave mine set to 15 pixels. Following that, we have the subtitle padding. By increasing the values evenly, we can see that the subtitle shifts because of the new padding. I'm happy with the way it was, so I'll erase this. Then we have the same thing for the text padding. It works the same, it just applies to the text. Finally, we have the button margin top. And when I move the slider, we can see the button shift away from the text. 
I'll leave mine at, say, 45 pixels. Perfect. The next set of options is for the button style. The first option in here is the typography for the button text. The settings within it are the same ones we've seen several times already. Then we have these switches, normal and hover. Normal contains the options for setting the button style when it's displayed normally, so when it's not being hovered over, whereas hover contains the options for setting the button style when it's, as the name suggests, hovered over. Now, any settings you make under normal will automatically be applied to the hover display as well. Then you can use the hover options to set exceptions or differences. So let's see what these options are. There's text color. I'll add a hex code to make mine white. Don't worry, I also plan on changing the button's background color. Okay, there. And now I can change the background color. I'll use a hex code to make mine a nice tangerine shade. Perfect. Then we have the border color. If you want to use a border, you can set a color here. Then you can increase the border width here. And actually, we can see my button shift a bit because the default border color is white and my increasing its width is making the whole button move. I'll remove this as my design doesn't include the border. The border radius option can help you round out the edges of your button. And we can see there's a small radius by default. If I click here, other than delinking the fields, it will also reset the values and make the default radius disappear. Then, if you want, you can set a radius for just one corner of your button, say the one that's top left. You can also link the fields again, just click here to do so. Then you can increase the button radius evenly past what was set by default. Okay. Actually, I'll reset the values again because I don't want to use a radius right now. Our next option is for the button padding. So this option would affect the space all around the button content. If I start to increase, the values start at 1 pixel and we can see how small the button has become. And as I keep clicking, the button keeps growing. But I want to set different values for different sides, so I'm going to delink the fields. And add 14 pixels at the top, 40 on the right, 14 at the bottom, and 40 on the left. Alright, now that I sorted all that out, I can hop over to the hover settings and show you what we have in there. So, in large part, these mirror the normal options. And without setting anything here, when I hover over the button, we can see there's virtually no difference between the normal and on hover display. Only the icon moves a bit. So, if you'd like your button to change colors or change text colors or anything like that on hover, then you'd use these options to set that. The one thing that's truly different here is the reveal background option. To show you what it does, I'll first set a background hover color. It doesn't matter which one, any of them will do, this is just to show you. Okay. So, when you have your background hover color and you hover over the button, you can see how the colors change. Now, what the reveal background option does is that it sets how the hover color is revealed. Right now, that behavior is none. But you can change that to horizontal and then the hover color will move in horizontally. Or you can change it to vertical and the color will move in vertically. So, this is a very nice effect if you want to use it. However, it's not part of my design plan for this element, so I'll restore this to none and clear the background hover color. Okay, that's it. Now, this next set of options is for those of you, actually those of us, who have chosen to add an icon to their button. These include adjusting the icon size. You can type or use the slider to change it. This looks nice, I'll leave it on 16 pixels. And then we have another set of switches for normal and on hover display. And here, when we click on hover, we have the move icon option. So, this is like a tiny animation effect that makes the icon move when we hover over the button. By default, it's set to horizontal short. If you change that to horizontal, then you get this look. And if you switch that to vertical, then it looks like this. With diagonal, you get this effect. And finally, you can set it to none to keep the icon stationary on hover. Since I don't have any other changes on hover, I'll keep the horizontal short animation. So it's just going to be a little something to have for my button on hover. When we switch back to normal, we get the option to change the icon color. 
and it works just the same as any other color setting. I'll make my icon white to match the button text. OK, following that we have the icon margin option. You can reset the values and the icon will get glued to the text. Since that doesn't look very nice, I'll set 10 pixels for the left padding. OK, underneath this we have the button inner border style. This is empty because I'm using the filled button layout. If I had used the layout with inner border, I would be able to access the options here. And the same goes for the button underline style settings. If you enable the button text underline, you'd get options to stylize it here. And that's it for our settings. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful settings for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations, and more. But since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our section title widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Now, having gone over all the options in the back end, when you look back on the widgets page, you should know how to make all of the examples here. Whether you choose to mirror what you see here or to create something entirely unique, it's up to you. You just need to decide which of the possibilities offered by the section title widget work best with the style and design of your site. I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its section title widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!